Hey, hello guys, this is Karthik from XVRAudimation.com and this is part 2 of our mobile framework development with Appium video series. And in this part, we're going to start discussing about page object model in Appium. So before watching this part, again, the prerequisite is understanding Appium playlist as well as Appium with Java video series available in our Exude Automation channel. So please go through these two playlists before watching this video series since this part will have some of the similarity of those two parts. Page object model. So in this part we will discuss how to write Appium code using page object model. Again we have discussed lot of information on page object model in part 5 and part 6 videos from Selenium Framework Design and Development video series which is available right here as you can see here. We can also see them in our YouTube playlist right here. So you can see that in our YouTube channel we have exclusive videos for Selenium Framework Design and Development but which again talks about page object model concepts as well as writing the page object model in Selenium. So we'll be using some of the same concept in our Appium as well. So I would request you to please watch these two videos before watching this particular video. All right, page object models. So the code looks something very similar to Selenium page object models, but it has a Android in the prefix as shown below. So you can see that there is at Android find by annotations with ID is equal to EDT NO number one. And similarly, Android find by ID is equal to EDT number two. And these are the two controls which we have for our applications. So if you have already watched Appium with the Java video series, then you will be knowing these two controls a lot since we have used these two controls a lot while writing the Android native application using Appium. So let me show you the code quickly. So this is the code which I was talking about automating native apps using Appium. So here we were writing a simple code like this and we automated our calculator application using Appium and we had all these find element by ID right here as you can see we just passed this edit number one edit number one again and we also saw the results here. So let me quickly grab this code and start working on that. So for that let me first flip to Eclipse. So this is my project and I'm going to start working with the same project which we worked in our Appium with Java video series. But I have deleted some of the codes from this simple test method. All right. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create one more class file under a different package. So for that, I'm going to create a class file and I'm going to name this as com.example.pages. And here I'm going to give the name as Kelsey app page and I'm going to hit finish. Similarly, first Appium test, I'm just going to rename this guy to Kelsey app test. And also, I'm going to update the reference along with this. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to write the page object model right here. Again, please go back to the uh, channel to watch the page object model concept since we're not going to deal any of these concepts right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the objects for the calculator application. Again, the calculator application is something which we already developed uh, in the Robotium video series. And we used the same application in Appium with the Java video series while automating the native application. So let me quickly show you the, how the application looks like. So for that, I'm going to open the Visual Studio emulator for Android. All right. And then I'm going to launch the emulator. So the emulator is just booting up. All right. So the emulator just booted and this is the application which we are going to automate. So these are the controls. So if I put 20 and 30, then it will add the value as 50. So this is a very basic and simple application which we are going to automate today. So for that, we already have the controls ID in our code. This is EDT number one and this is EDT number two and this is going to be TXT result, right? So 
I'm going to start working on that. So for that, the first and foremost thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to create the objects for that. So for that, again, I'm going to use public web element of txt num1. I'll just give like that. And then I'm going to add reference for this. And then I'm going to add a annotation like Android find by right and then you can just pass the and you can see what is the annotation is expecting actually it is expecting you a ID or name or tag name or something like that so you can give the ID as EDT number one right Similarly, you can create one more, two more controls maybe. This is edt number two, and this is txt number two, and this is txt result. And here I can give the controls ID as txt result, I believe. Yeah, it's txt result. So I'm just gonna pass the txt result, right? So I'm just going to save this and next since this is page object model we need to somehow initialize this particular pages again to initialize the page we need to create a constructor of this particular class so I'm going to create a constructor and then we need to somehow pass the driver as well so this is nothing but our Android driver so I'm going to create the Android driver of I oops web element of element. All right. And then we need to initialize the page. So for initializing, we need to use the page factory dot init elements. And you can see that there is something called field decorator. So this is the overload method that we are going to use right now. And then there is something called field decorator, new appium field decorator. All right. And then we need to pass the driver here. So again, the driver is going to be your, uh, oops, I should have given this as a driver, sorry. And then I can pass this driver and the page is going to be this page. Oops, I think I have wrongly given this. It is Appium Field Decorator. Oh, how does it change? I'm sorry for that. All right, so now everything looks fine. But also there is one more ordered method that you can also give the timeout duration if you want to. So how long you need to search a particular uh, controls in the pages, right? I can just leave this as of now. And then let's go back to the code and then let's just call this particular code and see how it works. And also I can write a very quick uh, method which does the addition operation. So I'm going to write a method called public void add and then I'm going to need to uh, pass the value as a string since that's how they have passed the values here. So string val1 or maybe string num1 comma string num2 and then I just need to call these two particular codes. So num1 dot send keys of, oops, num1, and then txt num2 dot send keys of num2, all right. And then we can write a method to verify the result. So public void verify result and then we can pass the uh, result as well what result which we expect so if the uh, txt result dot equals of this particular result which i'm passing it as a parameter then you s return me a maybe a boolean and then a return a true else you just return me a false awesome 
and then let's come back to this particular test and then I'm going to create a page object here Calci app page of the Calci page is equal to new Calci app page with the driver which we should, which we need to pass as the variable and what is this error change constructor to appium driver of web element that's what it is already oh i'm sorry it is uh appium driver i think i just passed as android driver that is the problem all right great so now the issue is resolved thanks to eclipse ide and then i need to just call these two methods calci page uh, dot i need to first uh, add so just add just pass 20 uh, comma 30 so the result which i know already uh, true or false right so if calci page dot verify result is going to be 50 then print me as past else print me as fail test so the code is written so quickly here and i don't have anything right now so i need to call my appium to just get started again i need to set the applications bin folder to locate this particular calculator application this calculator.apk so what i'm going to do right now is the calculator dot apk is already located there in the application path and all the required capabilities are already there so i'm just going to start this appium server and the calculator application is also up and running so let me just close this guy now the appium server is just booting up all right so appium server is just booted so let me quickly run this test and see how it works I have no idea whether this code runs fine or not but it's just a try since I'm not very sure about the objects as well whether they are correct or not Ooh, it has just strongly opened this calculator oh my god this is not this calculator I'm sorry I think I have wrongly given this particular calculator it is example of calculator this one and this guy is going to be a main activity all right so that's one big mistake let me stop this guy and let me start this guy again in the meantime i will close this calculator as well all right and now if we start this test all right it's just running so it opened our calculator now and we got an exception as expected awesome what is that cannot locate an element by this strategy locate our map by id edt and o1 now what is this error i think it is edt capital small n not the capital n i think that's the problem that is the first problem and this is not edit rather it is edt uh, my god all right great and now now what if i try to run this test whether will it run not sure now that's the problem i didn't find the elements before starting to write the code all right now it seems like the elements are good so it type 20 it type 30 as well and then now it should show me a pass result if it really passes so let me minimize this guy and see what is the result oh the test got failed hmm what is the next mistake we did i think the problem should be with this particular control 
with 20 comma 30 the result should be 50 but in actual it is not really doing that the reason is we have did a very great mistake because the txt result dot get text will actually return you a particular text and then we need to do a equals rather just getting this equals and that is the another mistake so let me quickly run this test once again and see if it works again so again i'm just going to uh, run this test and here is the emulator and here's the Appium server. All right, and now the test got passed. So now the test is really as expected, right? So the main and most important things which we need to verify is the object initializations like this and the page initializations like this and then performing the operations. So the two mistakes which I did was the control, I didn't identify it, I just copy pasted it from uh, the uh, existing code. Uh, so that is the problem. And then I really don't uh, get this guy, the get text method, I didn't pass them. The test card failed, right? So other than that, everything is very good. So this is how you can write a very, very simple page object model. This is just to prove a concept that you can write a page object model using Appium as well, more like your Selenium. So that's it guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.